In tutorial number seven, we're gonna be working on the interaction of what happens when the cube enters the sphere and then leaves the sphere. The first thing we're gonna do is explore some options on how we can do this. Let's click on our conditional node, press Control D to duplicate and drag it over to the right. Connect that up to the sequence there. Let's grab the action node and duplicate that also. Now the goal right here is to have two conditional statement, one that detects the enter and one that detects the leave, the exit. On the second attack player log text, let's change that text to go home, return home, because that's the action that the cube or the sphere is gonna be doing next. And if we test that, it's not gonna work too well. Yes, I did forget to change the if trigger enter to if trigger exit, but regardless, it's not gonna work well. This is a bad example of how to get this done. Instead, we're gonna explore a new type of node. Let's delete both of those conditionals, bring these two actions down to the bottom because we're still gonna use those. Drag a node out from the sequencer, go down to composites, and we're gonna do binary selector. Now the binary selector is kind of like a true false. It's a con very similar to a conditional node, except for when it's true, it'll go one way, and when it's false, it'll go the other. And that'll be very apparent very soon. On the binary selector, let's assign condition task and do the same condition, check trigger. Now in the trigger type, we're gonna do trigger stay. We're gonna make the other components exactly the same as the other conditionals we did. Let's check specify tag only, again, so it only detects objects of that tag, and then set it to player. Connect up those nodes, and you'll see when we drag it out to the left, it says true, and on the right one, it says false. As you can see, this is a much better implementation than the option we were exploring earlier. And since we have the binary selector there, we don't need the sequencer anymore. I was gonna delete the sequencer, but I think we're gonna be using that later. So just click start and let's see it in action. But as you can see, there's still a problem. When we enter that sphere collider, we want it to switch quickly to attack player, but it's not, it's stuck on that one second of logging the return home. Now we're gonna move on to a very important part you need to understand is the dynamic checkbox. The dynamic checkbox is gonna allow this binary selector to keep evaluating that condition over and over. So even if we are stuck on false, the moment it changes, it's gonna switch over to true. And if you click play, you can see now we're finally getting the behavior we wanted. That is all for tutorial number seven. and tutorial number eight, we're actually gonna make those actions do the action that they say they're gonna do instead of just text. Who wants text?